Hello, how are you doing? I want to do a fun challenge which has been making the rounds here on the Bookish community on YouTube, which is to go through my list of five star rated books on Goodreads and see if the general readership there agrees with my rating or disagrees with my rating. I'm a little bit nervous <laughs> about that, uh, but predominantly this is just an excuse to rave more about books that I've absolutely loved reading. So I'd love to know if what you think of any of these books that I've picked out as five-star reads as well. So I've got my Goodreads page up here and I'm going to do a search for my five-star reads. Now I'm not going to talk about every single book that I've rated five stars because I'm one of those people that has uh, that's quite generous with my ratings. I, I think that five stars is quite a limited amount. I wish you could do half stars on Goodreads and if I really enjoyed a book and I think it's great then I'm gonna give it five stars and so there are quite a lot of books that I've I've given that for but I there are lots of interesting things that play into those ratings so I'm gonna discuss that while going through these books and also I'm not going to go in depth talking about these books because if I do this video is going to be like eight hours long because I could talk about these books endlessly and and so I've written full reviews of quite a lot of these books so I'll put links to those below if you want to know more of my thoughts about uh, any of these books but yeah I it's uh, it's going to be an interesting challenge to see uh, the comparison between the general rating and my five star rating so first off we've got an absolute established classic which is Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier which I gave five stars. I only read it for the very first time a couple of years ago and the general star rating is 4.5 24, which actually I think is probably pretty accurate because this is one of those books that if I was able to refine the star rating a little bit more, I probably wouldn't you know, give it absolute five stars because I think that the ending does sort of let it down in how it's all wrapped up and comes together in quite a, a neat way. Or I feel like you can see the author's hands sort of manipulating the events that are happening in order to progress the plot that, that she was was writing but overall it is such an atmospheric and immersive read that I enjoyed reading this so much even though I'd seen the film before I knew what the story was and everything around the story because it's such a famous story but at the same time the the experience of actually reading the text it just blew me away. Next a not so known classic which is Good Morning Midnight by Jean Rhys and recently I talked about how Wide Sargasso Sea is Jean Rhys's you know more famous novel uh, and for, for good reason because as a prequel to Jane Air. It's such a brilliant idea uh, but this is one of her earlier novels which I think is so fascinating and it's I mean it's a very glum book it's a, a woman living in Paris uh, trying to get over a relationship having a lot of issues with self-esteem uh, she's just kind of wandering around drinking a lot crying a lot but I, I found it absolutely riveting this novel is, is so fascinating and dark and deep that I just adored it and on Goodreads they don't quite agree with me. There's a general rating of 3.89 uh, which I'm not too surprised about and I'm not mad about but uh, but yeah I, I absolutely love this. Oh another glum one <laughs> there's Corrigidora by Gail Jones uh, and this novel first came out in 1975 and it's about a African-American woman who's a blues singer and has very difficult romantic relationships and uh, has very complicated relationship with her family history and uh, the legacy of her family and the, the way it goes into that is so fascinating and moving and beautiful and uh, yeah so this, this general rating is 3.94 and uh, yeah I, I kind of understand that is as well but uh, I think this is a brilliant book. Simple Passion. Simple Passion 
Passion by Annie Ernaux, the great French writer. And I read this uh, for the first time uh, towards the end of last year and made a whole video raving uh, about how moving I, I found as an experience of describing that feeling of getting so wrapped up in a relationship where somebody becomes your whole world and how she explores the nature of that passion I think is so moving and meaningful and it's quite a short book but makes such a big impact and I probably would say that her book The Years is a more like all around accomplished book but this as a study on that single subject matter is so impactful. Women I've Known by Greg Johnson. This is such a fantastic collection of short stories. Um, the stories cover a whole range of, of subjects and uh, they're often quite atmospheric and uh, have this real underlying emotion to a lot of them. But one of the great things about this collection is there's a whole section of stories that fictionalize the lives of uh, different writers. Uh, so writers like Flannery O'Connor and Virginia Woolf and Willa Cather and uh, the way uh, he gets into, he approaches their lives from a really creative uh, method which gives a really different perspective uh, about the experiences of these authors lives and how that played into their creative enterprise of, of creating fiction and writing in a way that has impacted the world and I think it's so fascinating how he gets that that intersection between the the personal and and the art and is is so well done and this is something Greg Johnson knows very well because um, he's Joyce Carol Oates's official biographer which is how I first came across his his writing but his own fiction is really fascinating in itself. Cannery Row by John Steinbeck and this is uh, such a short novel but also a really impactful one he just gets the the grittiness of of life I can't remember too much uh, about this novel uh, in specifically and what happens about in it uh, except there's a man who's a kind of drifter and uh, there's there's also I think a kind of disgusting milkshake in it there's like a beer milkshake or something like that which is very weird but uh, it's just a funny detail that I that I kind of recall uh, about it but but overall such an amazing book and I really want to read more of John Steinbeck's work. The Bell by Iris Murdoch and this is such a fascinating novel. It's probably not my favorite Iris Murdoch. Uh, probably my favorite might be like The Sea, The Sea, but, but it is really strong novel and I remember the vivid opening scene of a woman on a train and the awkwardness of whether she should give up her seat to someone that, that seat seems to need her, her seat more, which is such a uh, common thing for people on public transportation. Uh, but in general, the, this story is really fascinating, moving, and as a depiction of eroticism too, uh, the, the, the way that she uh, shows that I, I think is so well done. Autobiography of Red by Anne Carson, and I was completely blown away by this epic poem but it's also much more a narrative about this creature, a figure from myth uh, called Garion and uh, from storytelling of, of like epic storytelling uh, and his ex how she melds that experience from this historical point of view with a kind of more modern sensibility is so fascinating and moving and there are so many lines in it that just absolutely struck me to my core. I, I think it's incredible. And looking at this copy I was just reminded how I got to see Anne Carson read and, and discuss from it and I got her to sign my, my book. So the general rating for this is 4.3 and I'm so glad that lots of people agree that this is such a powerful book. If Beale Street Could Talk by James Baldwin. I read this shortly before the film version came out uh, and the film version is really great as, as well but the novel is so strong and powerful and has some aspects about it you know which obviously didn't make it into the film and uh, yeah I, so I'm so glad I, I read this before watching the, the movie because it's an incredible book 
book. And I'd read a lot of James Baldwin's writing before coming to this, but I think it is one of his most powerful novels, you know, as a complete story in itself. Here's a classic which is slightly trickier, which is Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. And I came to this fairly late as well. I think I read it for the first time like five or six years ago. And it is a very powerful novel. It's so weird and, and striking. And so I think part of my high rating is just the, the, the weirdness of it and getting so wrapped up in this twisted and very dark story. And uh, so I, I understand that why some people have rated it slightly less, you know, even though it's this big classic, uh, it's rated 3.88. And uh, so yeah, I sort of get that. I'd probably, if I went back to it now and was picking it apart, I'd probably rate it slightly less as well or on the lower side of of four, like 4.25 or something like that, if I wanted to get that specific. But I mean, it feels ridiculous in a way to be rating classic books like this when this is such, you know, an incredible text that's been so influential throughout the, the years, you know, whether you like it or hate it. And uh, I went to actually see a theatrical production of this recently at the National Theatre, um, which was so fascinating. And, uh, and but I didn't totally work, um, though they made a lot of really interesting choices. And they were kind of making fun of it within the play uh, about how difficult it was to keep track of all of the characters and the lineage of, of the characters, uh, but did give me a really different perspective on the text. In Youth is Pleasure by Denton Welsh, um, which is a lesser known like English classic, but is so fascinating. I read it for the first time last year, and it's another one of those books that I was just so struck by the, the weirdness of the perspective. And it's such a singular perspective that I've not read about anywhere before uh, about this adolescent boy that's just kind of wandering around adrift um, during a summer and his thoughts and impressions of the world around him and the people around him is so unique and uh, unlike anything I've read before and had a really fascinating conversation with Edmund White about this novel and I recorded that and put it on my channel last year and uh, yeah it's it's such a fascinating book and um, he, he didn't write all that much fiction during his short lifetime um, but I'm interested in reading the the rest of his books. A much more recent book uh, the Argentinian novel Elena Knows by Claudia Pinheiro currently on the international Booker Prize shortlist and it's such a fascinating story uh, about a woman uh, living with a really challenging illness um, that physically debilitates her um, to a large degree and how it gets inside of her perspective is so powerful but it's also a mystery story because her daughter has died and she's trying to find out what actually happened to her daughter and the process of how she does that while having this physical disability is uh, in, it's just incredible. I'm so happy the general opinion too is quite positive with a 4.01 general rating. Memento Mori by Muriel Spark, uh, which is a, a lot of books are labeled as darkly funny and this book absolutely, this novel, this story absolutely is darkly funny in how it it pokes fun at the, the process of when uh, people are getting close to dying. So there's this group of people in this community that start receiving these anonymous phone calls from someone saying you're going to die. And it's about the whole mystery of, of who's making these calls, but more about the personalities of the characters and the secrets they've been holding uh, in their lives and about their relationships with each other. It's just so, so well done. And I have this beautiful Virago edition, special edition of the book. Another classic, Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. And this is another one of those classics that the actual experience of reading the story, I was totally unprepared for, even though this is such a well-known story and the, the tale of Dr. Frankenstein and his creation of the man he brought back to life um, who becomes a kind of monster. But it is so 
it gives so sympathetic towards that creation and and the loneliness uh, he feels is just so powerful and what makes this book such a classic and I, I quite disagree with the general uh, rating of 3.84 because yeah this is an absolute classic for a reason. Orlando by Virginia Woolf. I love Virginia Woolf's writing so much and I reread this uh, a couple of years ago and it's just such an incredible inventive story that uh, yeah so I disagree that 3.87 is not enough it deserves so much more it's so groundbreaking the the way it it looks at gender and uh, people's positions in society yes it's coming from a more upper class point of view or a privileged point of view but but the, the, the inventiveness of this story is just mind-blowing Wolf Hall by Hilary Mantel this is a tricky one because I'd actually put this novel down I started reading it uh, you know, close to when it first came out and immediately was so drawn into it but then once it got into the complexity of the politics of, of the time period which I don't actually know all that much about I found it quite alienating and so put it down and it's quite a long novel so it took me a long time it wasn't until the third book came out that I finally read in totality the first novel and was just swept away by it like once I got into it I did some research and in looking into to the life of Thomas Cromwell and and who he was and his role in the whole government and the politics of of that time that really helped me get into this book I don't think every novel should require that amount to actually get into and enjoy the experience rather than just reading it on its own but at the same time I feel like it was so worth it because it's such an incredible experience and all three books in this trilogy are incredible so yeah I don't agree with the rating general rating of 3.89 although I understand it the memory police by Yoko Agawa and this is such a such a weird uh, kind of dystopian type story uh, about a community of people where objects start disappearing and they're living under this kind of totalitarian rule and you're, you're not supposed to hold memories and people that do have memories of things that have disappeared uh, get into trouble and uh, yet yeah, the way it approaches that in such a philosophical and meaningful way I think is so powerful so yeah I think it definitely deserves a higher rating than this general 3.75 rating uh, yeah it was definitely five stars for me. Love by Hannah Orstevik. Uh, this is a very short Norwegian novel, an incredibly powerful story about a journey over the course of the night between a mother and a son um, who go separate ways and have very different journeys from each other. And it's a, such a moving and emotional story it's so powerful and beautiful I really highly recommend this Artful by Ali Smith this is a novel which I feel like it shouldn't work but it does work and it's such an incredible experience because she wrote it uh, she she well she initially wrote a number of lectures and then she incorporated these into a, a novel um, which is about an individual that is uh, going through a grieving process and how she does that and in incorporates all of this is so beautiful and impactful that I I shed actual tears while reading it it's it's so amazing and Ali Smith is an incredible writer Americana by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie I have this really funky uh, special edition of, of the novel and and yes yeah, such a moving uh, story it's it's a love story about individuals that fell in love when they were younger and then were separated uh, by circumstances and uh, about their relationship over time but it's about so so much more than that uh, just a beautiful moving impactful like epic story and just incredible and when is she gonna produce another novel and I, I so agree with uh, yeah this high rating general rating of 4.31 um, it's it's, it's it's a modern classic. The Luminaries by Eleanor Catton, which is such an epic story, um, but is so satisfying, like as a reading experience, because the the sections get shorter as you go along, and the the story becomes more compact. And how it does that is is 
gives the I think the the pace of the story a real propulsion to it um, which is yeah so satisfying but also as a story in itself with so many amazing fascinating characters uh, how it all comes together is great I have an embarrassing thing about this when it was listed for the Booker Prize and there was a Booker Prize reading at a, in London and I went to see that and I asked a question about this novel but was started like gushing about how much I, I love her her beautiful writing I, I, I and I started by saying you're such a beautiful writer and I think a lot of people took that to mean that I thought you know she the individual person was 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 beautiful I mean she is beautiful but that, that's not what I was trying to say I wasn't trying to like come on to her it was just a bit of an awkward thing uh, but yeah it's such an incredible book The Revolution of the Moon by Andrea Camilleri and this is such a fascinating story um, where one of those instances where a writer takes a little detail from history and then makes a whole novel about it. It's about a woman that became the Viceroy of Sicily in the 1600s and she had a very short rule because of the pressures around her at the time but she tried to enact all of these progressive laws during her, her time of rule and it's such a moving story that the way that it, he, he builds uh, the, the court around her and uh, the the pressures around her at the the time it's uh, just uh, it's incredible Lila by Marilyn Robinson oh such a moving book I, I just got completely emotionally involved in the story of of this girl and following her uh, t transformation and interactions with people as she survives and changes and and oh it's so good definitely deserves at least a general four star rating that 3.95 she's robbed the shore by sarah taylor a family saga and i love a good family saga and this is told in such an inventive way uh, that crisscrosses across uh, time in, in history and uh, to follow different family members at different times and the way it builds this portrait of uh, the family generations of this family over time but also the land they live on they they live on these uh, islands off the coast of Virginia and the depiction of the land and the way the the land changes and the community changes over time it's incredible and I think it deserves so much more than this general 3.5 five rating no five stars mr splitfoot by samantha hunt this is one of those novels i sort of forgot i read and i feel like it's become sort of forgotten uh, and overlooked uh, but it was such a good story about an orphaned girl and a psychopathic man that that runs this foster home and the the story it's so uh, it's so emotional and impactful but also has a real good sense of humor to it i think it's so well done and yeah it definitely deserves more than 3.65 soviet milk by nora extena and this novel about uh, three generations of women uh, it really focuses this is mostly on the mother and daughter's perspective but um, it's also about the the grandmother and their lives in Latvia uh, it's so well done in moving how the the politics of each of their time periods and their generations really impacted their their lives in ways which the different generations don't always totally understand and uh, how she depicts that is so moving and beautiful and I connected to this so strongly since especially since I have Latvian heritage and it's a novel that uh, I I did a whole video on doing a traditional Latvian recipe while talking about this novel but but also um, it led to me being able to travel to Latvia for the very first time myself and I did a whole video about that as well so this this book has such personal meaning for me and I'm really glad to see the the general rating of 4.32 like such a high rating for it because yeah it's so beautiful Solar Bones by Mike McCormick and this is such a weird like wonderful novel narrated from a man after he's died and he's sort of inhabiting the house that uh, he lived in and the the perspective as it goes throughout his day uh, is so beautifully done it's it's a sort of Irish writing at its best beautiful days by Joyce Carol Oates a collection of short stories I'm sure some of you that really know my reading taste have been waiting for Joyce Carol Oates to, to come up and yeah this is one of the first five-star books that, that came up because I, I think her writing is incredible the way she gets in 
the side of the lives of uh, these characters, many of whom are girls or adolescents or teenagers, um, is is so powerful. There's also a real creepiness and darkness to her writing quite often as she gets into the psychologies and the, the twisted psychologies of some of these characters. There's one story in this called Owl Eyes that is just, oh, and I just noticed this. Um, actually, she dedicated this book to Greg Johnson, who I talked about earlier. <laughs> Normal People by little-known writer Sally Rooney, <laughs> um, which there, there's so much discourse about this this novel. I mean, what can I say about it? But I am a Sally Rooney fan. I think her writing is is so involving and moving, but but also really complex in the ideas she explores and how she handles that and approaches it. I, I think is so well done. And yes, I was a fan of the the series of of Normal People and her other books, and looking forward to the upcoming series. Of of conversations with friends. Uh, I'm not too surprised by this rating of 3.85, but definitely think she deserves more. And it makes me really wonder, so so what are some of the, the highest rated, general highest rated books um, that, that agree with my five star rating? And what are some of the lowest general ratings um, that compare to my five star rating? So I'm gonna look at that now. Okay, the book that comes up with the highest general star rating uh, out of all the books that I've rated five stars is cast by Isabel Wilkerson uh, which I totally agree with it totally makes sense this this nonfiction book had such a big impact on the way I, I think about race in America and the way we perceive that and and relate to that I, I often think back on this book about and about what it what it says about our conceptions about race and racial relations in general um, yeah this is such a moving and powerful book um, that I think has made a big societal impact. Becoming by Michelle Obama. I mean, how can you not love this memoir? I just completely devoured it and fell into it and wished M Michelle was <laughs> my friend. Another of the highest rated books, another recent novel, The Love Songs of W.E.B. Du Bois by Honoré Fernand Jeffers. I think this deserves all of the praise and acclaim it gets and deserves more awards, more awards, more award nominations. <laughs> and another incredible family saga. Oh, and here we have another big, huge family saga, The Eighth Life by Nino Haratachvili. A big, big family saga has so many stories to it, uh, but is so involving and richly rewarding to, to read the entire thing. And I had a wonderful conversation with the author and translators here on my channel, so I put a link to, to that down below as well. And finally, from some of the, the top rated books uh, in general that, that uh, agree with my high rating uh, is Don't Call Us Dead by Denez Smith, this poetry collection, which is so impactful and powerful and emotional. I got completely wrapped up in these poems. Uh, like every single one of these poems I, I think is stellar and, and really it says something much bigger, you know, than the, the short amount of words that are used within the, the collection. And if you get to see Denez Smith perform their poetry, do because uh, such a powerful performer as well as a poet. Okay, this is nerve racking now some of the lowest rated books uh, in general, uh, then where, which I gave five stars to. So actually, the lowest rated book, oh, okay, this is surprising. Uh, so Felix Culpa by Jeremy Gavron, uh, which is an odd novel uh, from 2018 uh, that that is uh, very creatively done because it's actually mostly made up of lines from other books. Um, he, he uses this kind of collage effect where he takes text, lines of text from I think over 80 different books and combines it together to make a single story. And that seems like it shouldn't work. And I guess it didn't work for some people because um, there's a general rating of 2.75. But but I thought it was so fascinating and, and actually does come together as a story in itself. Um, so yeah, so, so interesting. Uh, but yeah, I can kind of see why it's controversial. Ooh, The Children's Home by Charles Lambert. This is such a 
dark, weird, sinister novel uh, that made me really anxious actually reading it because it is quite like weird what's going on and there's a lot of tension in it of this man who has barely left his home and has this kind of privilege around him that he's grown accustomed to and then he gradually is made aware of the darker aspects of things that are happening ar around him and I, I think it's so creative how he approaches that and, and what that says about our personalities and ways we can become uh, accustomed to uh, our, our lives and the comforts of, of our lives and um, how we need to be aware of the larger impact that's having on the community around us. So I think it makes a really strong statement now and definitely rated higher than this general 2.94. Um, yeah, it's such a powerful story and, and he's such an interesting writer. And finally, this is Shady. So uh, Joyce Carol Oates's most recent novel, uh, Breathe, uh, which has a general rating of 2.90. And uh, but I rated it much higher because I absolutely love her writing. But also, I think it's such a powerful depiction of a woman who is grieving and how our consciousness becomes kind of fractured as she's trying to persist and just carry on. But at the same time, she's an an absolute crisis point of her life and I had such a, a moving and meaningful conversation with Joyce Carol Oates talking about this novel last year which I, I posted up uh, the video of that I posted up here on my my channel and I, I felt so privileged to be able to to talk to her and I've had a number of conversations with her her now and the the way she talks about her her writing I think really enriches uh, your understanding of it so I definitely recommend listening to that um, but also definitely recommend reading her her writing which yeah I just connect with so strongly and find so powerful so those are all the books I'm going to talk about uh, yeah quite a quite a varied um, selection and there's a lot more I could talk about that I've rated five stars but I'd love to know if you have any thoughts about these books or if you're interested in reading any of them now uh, please let me know about that in the comments below and if you want to do this experiment yourself and what are some of the results you come up with that uh, the general readership of Goodreads agrees with your opinion and what are some of the books that the general readership doesn't agree with your opinion that would be really interesting to know as well so please let me know about that in the comments and I'll probably do a video too about uh, some of the some of my worst rated books on Goodreads because that would be a funny perspective uh, as, as well so uh, thank you for watching I hope you're reading good things and I'll speak to you again soon bye bye